Yo, what's up everybody? It's David Bredor, aka Brilliant, and today I'm really excited because I'm going to show you this tutorial that I made that will bring us through hard surface modeling, to texturing, to lighting, the whole thing from beginning to end. Even if you're not modeling this exact object, it doesn't matter. I think you're still going to get a lot out of this tutorial because we're going to go through techniques that you're going to be able to problem solve and put towards anything that you're creating that's more geared to your hard surface modeling. But then again, you know, we're going to light and texture it all in Octane. And you can apply that to anything that you're creating. So let's just jump into it and go. All right. So what we're going to be modeling is this retro PC mouse here. The awesome thing about this is I'm going to take you from beginning, from modeling from nothing all the way to the final texturing and lighting. And we're going to get a really nice solid mouse here. The other bonus is that we're going to learn a lot of techniques with hard surface modeling, more hard surface modeling techniques for this specific object. But all the techniques here, we're going to be able to apply to literally any object that you're trying to create that is also with hard surface modeling techniques. So this is going to be a really useful tutorial, whether you're making this specific mouse along with me or trying to make something else there's going to be a lot of great learning moments in here so the first thing we're going to do is just start off with a basic cube now this basic cube let's just try to get some general proportions here of our mouse so i'll try to get the kind of length and width here and dial this in a bit i'm looking at this i kind of feel like it's already pretty much there and at any point i'm going to be able to come into this and make uh, any like little specific adjustments after as well so Awesome, there's our cube. I'll hit C on the keyboard and make this editable. Now we're gonna be working with our polygon edge and point modes. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my edge mode and I'll grab my loop selection tool. I'm just gonna do scale this in, kind of give this all a little bit of an angle. Now the back, you know, based on my reference has a little bit of an angle, not a whole lot. The sides seem to have a little bit more um, than the back. So if I just grab the X axis here, I can scale that in a little bit as well. And now the front has the largest angle. So I can come in here and grab my move tool and just select this front edge and place an angle in there as well. Now the overall height seems to be a bit extreme on this still. So I'm gonna bring this down. I'll go into my polygon mode. I'll select this individual face and I can just bring this whole thing down and that's going to kind of make my angles a little bit more extreme but i think it's a little bit more accurate now as well okay so the next thing we want to take a look at is this bottom face so it doesn't just come down to an angle and then this is like where the surface is on the table actually um, so we'll grab this polygon face here because it comes down and you know then there's an additional edge to this that's kind of more at a 90 degree angle and then there's another edge that I'm going to pull that down um, because there's like two separate pieces of plastic. And if I pull in my reference here, you can see that you can see that there's like this top half of the shell and this bottom half of the shell. Um, and that's where when they're manufactured, they snap those two pieces together. And that why that way, like the electronic you know, stuff can be internalized inside of the mouse here and they can snap those together. So that's kind of what we're making. Now, the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is begin to add some bevels. So I'm gonna just go into my edge mode. And I'm gonna select all my edges here, and then I'll go into my loop selection. I'm gonna deselect that middle loop. I don't need to add any bevel to this piece. So just really my corners and my edges here. And I'll go into my beveling, and let's just say apply, and let's change some of these settings here. Um, let's see what eight looks like. Maybe we should go a little bit less. Eight's pretty close. I wonder what six looks like. Six feels pretty accurate. Now, obviously you don't want to go so high to where, you know, you're just rounding and I guess it all depends on, you know, what exactly you're making. Uh, for me, it seemed like six is probably pretty good though, uh, for the amount of rounding that we need. Let me turn on my garage shading and lines as well here, just so we can take a, start taking a look at the overall segments. Now, the next thing that we're gonna really want to do here is create that separation between the top and the bottom. So I'll go into my polygon mode and my loop selection tool, and we're going to wanna create a loop selection here that is in between you know, that bottom half that we just looked at and the top half that we looked at. And so if I just use uh, my scale tool, so T, 
Uh, and if I hold down control or command, you can see I can bring this face in or out. And I want to bring this face in. And, you know, sometimes it's not like uniform. You can see here on the back, there's a lot more space than there is on the side. Not a ton more, but a little more. It's not perfectly uniform. So you can like, if you need it to be uniform, you can go in there and grab something specific here. If you want to bring that back edge out a little bit, you can do that just by gra grabbing those individual handles. But now if we look at this, we are beginning already to get the majority of the shape of this mouse here, right? So if I kind of just move this over, off to the side a little bit, right? And I bring in my reference, you can see already that generally speaking, we're getting the shape here. And again, all this can easily change. If I'm looking at this and I'm like, ah, you know what? I think some of this is not the right angle. I can change that. All right, the next thing let's do, uh, let's get the loop path cut tool again. And let's start marking where we want these buttons to be. Now, the, the thing with, um, with putting some of these loop edges in here is that this is creating great edge flow. So you want these to wrap around. So it's like, I, I don't wanna just grab the line cut tool, for example, I'm gonna undo this. So if you're following along, don't do this part. You don't just wanna come in here and create one edge and then model your buttons because this creates open-ended points. And remember, our main goal is to create quads or tries. Quads being kind of the holy grail of the polygon that we're trying to create. But if we make some tries, we're not gonna get hung up about that either. So let's grab that loop path cut tool again. And I'll come in here and I'll make a cut. So it seems like it's sh a little bit shorter, um, the button on, on the top side, uh, and a little bit longer on this, this kind of like angled side here. Now we're going to grab our loop path cut tool again, <clears throat> and let's start getting the, the, um, the buttons added in. So the first one I'm going to do, I'm going to do these kind of vertical cuts here. So we'll add a vertical cut in and let's just maybe offset this by 10. Let's do another vertical cut in here and say 90. All right, so those are kind of our vertical cuts for the buttons. We'll add in uh, another vertical cut for the middle of the buttons and let's just split this into two. Uh, what I can also do is I can grab these two vertical cuts and I mean, I'm really just working off of this one photo reference, but it looks like there's less of a gap and the buttons are a little bit wider here. After looking at this as well, I'm kind of feeling like the button is a little bit longer coming down on this angular face here. Um, and this is one of my favorite things about modeling is like painting. Like you can mess up while you're painting, paint the wrong color, have the wrong brush stroke. And yes, it's frustrating because it's like, ah, it's a little extra work, but it's always able to fix it. It's just paint. It's like just paint back over. Same thing with modeling. If I don't like where this edge is anymore, you know, I can just dissolve that and I can create a new loop cut right in here and say, uh, yeah, that's probably a little bit more accurate to the length that I want that button to be. So now let's go and grab our polygon mode and let's select our button faces. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of an inset. So I'll use the inset tool because these buttons are actually in, you know, in the on the real mouse uh, would be made of two separate objects, right? And that way they can click and move and stuff like that. For this, I don't need them to animate. So I will model them all into one piece and, and kind of separate them with uh, some, some uh, selection tags essentially uh, but I do want them to feel and look like they're separate objects so what I'm gonna do with this inset is I'll apply and I have it really small at like 0.5 that seems to work pretty good and then I'll grab my loop selection tool I'll grab that inside edge that's separating the buttons from the mouse and I want to pull these down so I could just use my move tool again and hit can hold down control or command and just simply move these down a little bit. Um, I want to make sure I move it down enough because when I, if, when, and uh, I go to bevel, not if, but when I go to bevel, uh, these edges here, I don't want it to intersect into the geometry. So that is feeling probably pretty good. I'm the, the mouse looks like it's got some sharper edges on those faces. So I don't think there's going to be a whole lot more that we have to do there. Now let's go back in and select the faces of the mouse uh, buttons again. And let's see if we can just control and drag this up. I think something, I think 
five is probably pretty good. Yeah, that looks to be about, you know, roughly the height here. And let's go in edge mode and let's add some bevels in as well. Uh, I'm, I'll grab this edge as well, this loop edge here. I don't want, I, I might be able to get away with not doing anything to this bottom edge here because we're not going to see it. I know that's probably not the best practice. If it starts messing up other areas of the model, then we do have to kind of go in there and make that adjustment. And I will want to select the corners as well. So make sure we go in there and select all the corners because they need to have a little bit of a bevel also. Let's select this corner and this corner. Okay, so there we go. All the corners should be selected. I didn't do that inside edge. Oh, you know what else? This edge here, now that we move that face up, we actually don't need that that selection so i i, I do want to add that little piece in there it's kind of i probably should have dissolved that before because now i got to go in there and click each one of those so i will do that i'll select each one of those faces and not have to have that recorded all i'm going to do is click all the there we go i saved you from the boredom of having to watch that uh, so really all i went ahead and did was dissolve that additional loop edge that i had here and now I've just got all my corners selected. I, I'm, I'm seeing if I can avoid uh, putting any bevels and additional geometry here. Let's see how that holds up though. And again, we'll go to our beveling and say apply. Now, way too much here. Let's bring this down. Let's see what two looks like. Um, two looks like maybe a bit too rounded as well. Let's try with one. Yeah, one seems to be about right and accurate for the kind of amount of beveling that's happening on that maybe you know what maybe just a little bit more maybe maybe two is more accurate and you know again i'm just kind of working along maybe 1.5 uh, just because really I'm, I'm just doing this by by eye right now looking at this and kind of determining what that what the angles and everything like that should be here and now while i'm modeling this and while i have these faces selected i may as well create some store selections here um, so I'm going to grab my loop selection tool and let's just see. Um, now, I definitely have some modeling issues, right? As we can see, I'm, if I'm trying to create quads and tries, um, this is not a quad or a try here, right? No three sides or three points. Um, so I really should fix that. Uh, I'll select this kind of bottom loop here as well as this bottom loop there. And let's see. Um, we could probably just do a fill selection at this point. So select, and then we'll go fill, select. So we'll fill, select everything in between those two. Excellent. So here we go. Here is our buttons. So I can hit V on the keyboard, which will bring up my little interactive menu. And I can say store selection. I can just say buttons. Perfect. All right. So there's the buttons of the mouse. Now, the other thing that we have in here is the little wire that comes out of the mouse. Now, this wire is like starts off squared. Um, we're probably not going to focus a whole lot on the wire right now, but at least we can model the port where the wire will come out from. So again, we're going to take a look at that loop path cut tool here. And you can see that the loop path cut tool is not really working correctly. Typically, if you notice that your loop path cut tool or one of your tools isn't working how you imagine it to be, most likely that's because you have some modeling issues. And look at that. I definitely do because we have these beveling now that are creating open-ended points here. Uh, and that is kind of throwing off our geometry. Um, and so, you know, this is creating a quad, but now on this polygon, we have something that's got um, more than four sides and four points here. So it's kind of creating a weird end gone. And then our loop path cut tool isn't really working all that properly. Now, what I could do to fix something like this is I actually could take these two paths and have this geometry just kind of wrap around and then connect back to itself. So I could kind of show you, you know, just with this here, it's good to be able to know what to fix and how to fix it. So I could just basically connect this point and this point, this point and this point, right? And same thing with this point and this point, right? And so now I've made these all into quads. This is back into a quad here as well. And then basically the same thing I would have to do and wrap all the way around my geometry here, which 
is honestly not that big of a deal. Um, I might need to figure out how to best construct it around this. So maybe I'll come straight down. Uh, maybe, maybe uh, I, I mean, I could finish it off into a try somewhere. I try to avoid doing that. <clears throat> and I'd much rather have this kind of loop all the way around our geometry if possible. So maybe I'll try doing that and just have this piece kind of come down here more or less. It doesn't have to be 100% um, perfect. I think at a certain point, it might make sense to just straight up have this, you know, go into a try. But just for, for the sake of this, it's like, hey, let's, uh, let's see what we can do for sticking to quads. It's always nice to be able to work in quads. Let's bring this across, across again. And we'll work up our geometry here. And if you're ever using the line cut tool and it's just like not functioning how you imagined, um, welcome, welcome to it because that happens constantly um, when you're using the line cut tool. And sometimes you just need to change the angle that you're working at. It's very dependent on that a lot of the occasion. And we'll bring this up and then we'll just kind of bring this back straight over, right? Bring it up here. And then this needs just to complete. And so basically, you just want to try to do this with this path as well. And then once you do that, um, we'll be all set. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So it's really just the same exact step. We just did this past time. And uh, if you want to try to make this even, you can see how I got this line kind of nice and straight over here. Well, this one kind of like bends up and angles. There's also the slide tool, which you might want to take a look at. And the slide tool is really kind of basic as well. Um, so it is O, a quick command. You got to go on the points for that. Uh, but then you can just simply come in here and you can slide a point. Oh, I'm still on my knife tool. Um, where is slide in the menu? Is this slide? No, that's mirror. Where's slide in here? Um, I like finding it in the menu as well. I know where the quick command is, M, and then slide is O. I might not have selected because, oh, there it is down at the bottom here because I was probably in, when I was in edge mode. But now you can basically just slide this point along an edge. So like you can't get it off that edge, you know? So that's, that is kind of cool as well. So just kind of keep that in mind. The slide tool is rather rather nice. All right, so there you go. So we've kind of cleaned that up also. And now we've got that nice edge loop. So I'm going to go and kind of convert all these into quads and then we'll take a look at it here in just a moment. All right, so now as you can see, I've got those paths. So they're no longer open ended points here. Now we never fixed this inside. This is actually a pretty easy fix. I mean, I can just kind of turn these into quad or tries rather so i can just bring each one of those and bring it right into a try right and so we may as well fix it since we're in here fixing stuff no reason to come in here and not fix it there'll be a lot of instances though where when i'm working on something if it's not creating any kind of visual issue when i'm modeling um i, I can try to get away with some of the stuff and hide it uh, but it's always best to, to obviously work and fix this stuff while you're working because sometimes these issues that you're like, oh, that's not a big deal. Uh, when you go to like UV map or something like that, sometimes these create really funky things. Or if you need to throw your object into a subdivision surface, having open end points like this will give you some weird wonky results as well. So it's really best habit to, you know, just go in there and get your geometry correct and and looking right so we'll fix those and get all these turned into tries and now we are kind of good to go let me just make sure i didn't miss any i got that corner that corner and sometimes it's like you know just a lot of repetitive steps in here just making sure that you've got everything lined up but now awesome everything's good to go now let's see if what I said is actually true, because remember our loop path cut tool was not working uh, when I wanted to create like this hole here for the cord to come out of the mouse. And I said, well, probably because my geometry is broken up here. Uh, let's see if that in fact fixes it now. So let's go and grab that loop path cut tool. And 
it almost fixes it. It's like, okay, well now it does it across this whole face, but why not anywhere else? Well, look, we gotta fix these as well. So the same thing that I did in the front, I never went and corrected it in the back side. So those will also have to be fixed. Pretty simple because it's just the same step that we did before. And sometimes that's what modeling is. And that's really a cool part is because a lot of times modeling is just like, hey, you're just repeating the same steps over and over again. Depends on what you're modeling, but it doesn't get any harder. It's not like you have to learn a whole new technical set of things. It's just a little bit more time consuming. So I'll fix these now. So the nice thing is actually we could save some steps here because our loop path cut tool is actually looping around exactly where we'd want these edges to go. So I can just create three. It gets me almost exactly to where I need it. And then I can just use the line cut tool to complete the rest of these quads and have it close, right? Just like that. And it did it for us on the other end as well. So I can just come in here connect each one of those. If you're wondering how I'm kind of ending this tether, I'm just hitting escape each time to kind of close out of that tether there. All right, let's go back in. Woo. Let's go back into our loop path, path cut tool and let's see if this will actually loop around. It might not even like it because of these kind of additional segments here. So let's just take a look and see what it's going to do. Yeah, it's still not wanting to loop around. Oh, well, though. Um, we'll be able to close this off on our own. So let's just go down in here. This is kind of where the cord for the mouse comes out. Um, it's pretty much centralized. Now we do want to fix this open ended point that we have. Um, and you know, I really have ev almost everything working in quads right now, but this could be an instance where I just break this out, uh, and give in here to a, a try at a certain point. Um, so there's another tool called stitch and sew, which I use quite often. Stitch and sew is great because you can basically just merge one point into another, right? And I can kind of just have that now taper out into a try right there. So I can do the same thing on this. So I can just stitch and sew those points right in there. And now we've kind of concluded that into a try. And now we'll take this polygon face right there and we'll kind of manipulate that as well. Sometimes the angle, you can't just use object mode or world mode here to like get the face to kind of go in. So you might need to use the extrude tool, uh, but this is, this is working pretty good, you know, just to kind of have that face in set. Um, maybe I want to kind of like rotate it as well. That's fine. Uh, maybe I want to kind of transform the scale also. So it's not kind of going up and it's kind of all locked in at some nice 90 degree angles or more or less. Uh, then we'll want to do a loop selection again on this edge. And let's uh, let's give this a little bevel as well. I may as well select all of these faces as well as the corners. Now we're not even going to really see this detail, but you know, depending on what it is that you're making, you might be seeing those details here. And let's give this a bevel also. So we'll hit this with a, a little transform. Let's go with one. And then we also want to grab this separation between the top half and the bottom half. I thought I already did this. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I hit undo by accident. We grab those two here and let's give this a bevel also. So we'll say new transform. And I think a radius of one is actually pretty accurate. Uh, to that. So let's just turn off our garage shading and lines. Just go back to garage shading here. You can see our typology is pretty darn good. I am getting some kind of like triangulated angular um, edges here. Let's see why that would be. Let's turn our garage shading um, and lines back on and let's take a look. You know, why is it kind of coming and pinching all those two surfaces? I don't see any. Oh, well, that's because we just added that that beveled edge in here, right? So we've gone ahead and, and complicated that a little bit by adding that. Well, you know, that's, that's fine. That's not that big of a deal. We could, we could undo that bevel and maybe try to do some beveling with our octane material, which could be pretty cool. Let's do that. Let's undo 
this last bevel because we are going to be jumping into octane and we do want to talk about some powerful techniques we can do with just the material itself uh, what i am going to do though is i am going to throw this loop selection and bevel back in here because i did really like that um, and then we'll kind of readdress this one here in a moment that way we're not getting any funkier issues we don't have to redo and get a whole nother set of quads in here and we'll try to get that kind of edge here to be beveled via the material all right sweet so here are my set of geometry this is looking pretty darn good all right now let's start on the fun part of this because i feel like the model is basically done and complete like this is looking pretty darn good at this point you know if i move this model just like off to the side and we get it at this angle and i pull my reference in there you can kind of see the model is pretty pretty close you know just for kind of eyeballing it uh, and making this here so let's uh let's get into the fun of texturing so i'm going to add in uh, a plane here that this can sit on slide that down beautiful and let's scale this up perfect well even, i even like the angle that the shot is that it's a shot is actually on all right so let's get octane going let's get our live viewer going let's of course add an octane camera in here let's go into the camera i'm going to change my focal length let's go into 80 something kind of like a beauty lens here this is looking nice get this framed up where we want it i'm going to add in an hdri environment i'm going to use the grayscale gorilla hdri link plus here to work with this as well and i'm just going to change the overall preview rev uh, resolution here and because we're not really seeing any reflections quite yet but let's just get the render going and just like that you know you can see kind of what a quality model is going to do for us you know just like instantly right out of the gate you know we've got something here that is start that's looking fairly good you know with just some basic hdri nothing else at this point so let's make some material so i'm gonna make a material and i'm gonna make a glossy material and let's add this material to our object i'm not going to worry too much about the uh you know the button color quite yet let's just get the base color overall and then we can start kind of defining more and more of like the buttons and the color separation and stuff like that um, so we'll open up our node editor and i'm just going to add an rgb spectrum and let's just get the rough color and i'm just going to basically be able to color pick the kind of reference image that i have here and boom just like that you know if i slide in this reference image you can see how kind of close that we are to the to this like i see this angle being a little bit more extreme um, than what we have but you know hey not too bad here <clears throat> and again we can always adjust this all this can still be adjusted because it's just modeling so let's slide this off to the side and now we've got you know like, like this plastic material usually has like these tiny little bumps in it and noise and stuff like that you know i do have the gsg plus account um so i i'm fortunate enough that i've got this little plus library that we could open up and in here they have some really great if you go into the tech uh, products i believe they have some actually really good tech plastics and stuff like that here um, right like the keyboard surface um, I'm sure there's a bunch of other ones right just these plastics in general um, let's see uh, yeah I mean a lot of these you could just dive into it and just use those which is pretty pretty good you know and I highly recommend this if you do have uh, the GSG plus you know take advantage of this I mean they got their kind of speckled plastics already in here I mean I would go ahead and uh and just grab one of these um let's just add one into our scene and let's just take a look um if it's got any of these kind of attributes and qualities that we want so let's open up the node editor here um let's see what's in kind of the normal map um plastic product so yeah I mean we could even like take what we've got and copy some of this stuff and so uh let's see is there there's some roughness uh, but it looks like they might be getting the bump out of like the normal map here so let's just select this and let's add this into our own and this is our kind of normal map right we can just drag and drop that right in and let's zoom in on this for for a moment just to see if like there's any kind of surface texture that is in fact going on here yeah you can see it as kind of like the reflection comes up 
that it's not just like perfectly smooth. There's this kind of nice bump. I love that, right? That's really kind of nice. Um, that is what we're, we're looking for out from this. So perfect. Um, and I can always throw like a transform node into this and we could get a little bit more uh, control over it. So they're all kind of like collapsed and hidden right now. So we can just go pins and say show all. Um, let's see if I double click on this, we'll expand out. Um, I, I really think just show all does it. Let's just try it again. Let's see pins show all. Okay, there you go. So you might just have to hit it uh, once or twice here. Uh, but if you want that kind of pattern to be bigger, you know, we could also throw a transform node right in here and boop, link that right up. And if you want to try to get that texture to be larger or not, you can control that right here as well. So let's just close out of that. I'm happy with where that's at currently. We could also try, you know, if you have any other kind of textures that you want to throw in there to kind of get a pattern or some scratches or stuff like that, you know, definitely do that. I might even go back and grab this Grayscale Gorilla uh, Plus library and just go into some of their textures and see what all, you know, we have to, to kind of work with here. Um, you know, scratches might be pretty cool. You know, and we might want to restrict certain scratches to certain areas as well. So let's just grab um, one of these scratches, drag and drop it in. We'll just throw it right in as an image texture. And now before we get too far along, I really want to add some things in like some some dirt nodes. They can be really, really powerful, especially like separating certain areas of the geometry. And so if we were to just grab um, a simple dirt node here and drag and drop it in. Let's swap this out for the diffuse just so it's easier to see what the heck is going on. So if I grab this dirt node and let's just increase the strength a little bit, um, what you're probably going to start noticing is in kind of like the crevices and stuff like that. Let's just like increase the detail and the radius, right? And so when you do that, you can see in all the kind of little like corners and cracks, which could be cool because when we maybe want to add some like dirtiness or some um, where like, you know, the oils from your hands are kind of collecting. It's probably going to be in those areas. But let's try inverting that normal and let's just like mess a little bit again with the overall kind of detail. So now it's just kind of showing up on the edges for the most part, right? Uh, so I can kind of increase maybe the strength. Um, decrease the overall like radius a little bit. You know, even if I get something like that, that's kind of cool. Now check this out because what we can do is we can get a multiply node. I'll just type that in and drag and drop that in and plug this into the bump and we can get our dirt node here, plug that in and plug our texture in and what you'll see, hopefully, what we can do, let's just slide these down a little bit. And if we go back and invert this again, so this dirt node back on the diffuse, just so we're seeing it. Did I mess something up? Where did it go? Where is that dirt node at? Invert. Let's increase that strength just so it's extra, extra strong here. And maybe I need it to be on the bottom beneath. Let's reverse that. Okay, yeah, it's working. Uh, I just need to make it a little bit more obvious here. So if I just like, let's just increase the strength significantly and I'll start increasing the radius too. And what you're going to start seeing, let's zoom in, you're going to start seeing it kind of disappearing on the edges and being a lot more prominent in the center, All right? And we could do the opposite now. If we take that dirt node and we invert it, you know, we could, let's just, because some, it's hard to see what's happening in the dirt node um, when it's like this, so you might want to kind of invert some stuff here. Um, and you can see where that is actually going to be controlled. I like the idea of having it, um, something like that. So like, you know, maybe on the edges where there's a lot more friction over time, um, it becomes to get more smooth on the corners and hard edges and stuff like that. I think that's kind of a cool look. Um, I don't know if this material is exactly the one we want and maybe we want to kind of reduce the overall um, 
strength of that. You know, we could try swapping out with some different types of scratches. Let's take a look at some of these, you know, maybe even like the crust and smudges and stuff like that, you know, from like oils from hands and whatnot. We could throw those in there. Those, those actually look pretty cool, right? And see how they're not showing up on the corners, which make would make sense because that's a, a highly touched area where it would the friction would kind of smooth that out and kind of gunk up everywhere else. I think this is pretty darn cool, actually. I might reduce the overall power. Let's say like half of that. Let's show that RGB spectrum back in on the color. You know, already we're getting a heck of a lot of detail out of this. Um, let's try 0.25, something kind of like even softer might be more interesting. But again, all this control now is coming out from the actual dirt node itself. Really, really awesome uh, just to be able to kind of swap that out. And so this might be not, this might not be something you've done before using a dirt node to just have a, a certain bump in a particular area. Uh, but now this is really looking cool. Okay, so the next thing I'll do is I can basically just copy and paste this Octane material and I'll open this one up and the RGB spectrum, I'll just color pick the kind of darker gray that's on the buttons. And I'll add, oh, let's swap these around here. And I'll add that to the cube and in the selection for it, right? On the material uh, where it says selection, I'll drag and drop it where it says those buttons. And now we can get more specific coloring over those buttons. And now we haven't even gotten into, let's just pop out of here and back into our camera. Uh, now what we haven't even gotten into is additional lighting. Now I am just using this kind of HDRI uh, for the overall lighting, but let's also add some kind of texture to the plane here. So I'm gonna add the, um, just a, a basic glossy material to this. Uh, we can go in here and Kind of make this um, something darker. This is actually kind of nice. I think if I start swapping out that HDRI, we might get kind of some odd reflections in here. I'm not 100% sure, uh, but let's open up the node editor as well. And let's like add some additional detail. Let's go back into this plus library. And again, if you don't have this, I mean, there's tons of ways of even taking your own photos or using a lot of other, you know, online assets to get textures, a lot of other free stuff as well, if you don't have this. So don't get to this point and be like, oh, I can't keep up anymore. All these are image textures here. And maybe I'll grab just like some sort of scuffed surface. Um, some of these scratches could be interesting. And let's drop that into, you know, the, the specular. Now this is a, a bit extreme, but again, it doesn't have, we don't have to use it as as extreme as this maybe i want to invert this as well maybe increase that right so we get some of that glossiness back i don't know um let's try you know a couple other um textures and texture options and possibilities so if i were to grab you know let's see something else. i mean some of the dust could be cool you know just really something simple and subtle might be might be better for this table surface let's try it and this is really like the fun part of like modeling and creating is like you now get to play with all this. Uh, but this is looking pretty cool. Maybe I'll take it from the specular and drop it into kind of the, the roughness here. Let's increase the overall roughness of it. And it's just kind of breaking this up. Um, I do have it inverted right now too. You know, let's get some of that glossiness back. This is kind of cool. So that transform node in here, maybe the scale of this is a bit too large right now, um, but it does break up some of that uniformness that's happening in that, um, in just like a glossy reflective surface. Uh, but again, you know, play around with different types in here and, uh, and see what kind of results you get you know, depending on how we swap that in or out. The dust is cool. Maybe smudges would be better though. You know, we are working on kind of like a surface. Let's throw in some of my coffee rings. That's cool. It's a, uh, eh, it's a bit, you know, cliche looking to me. Um, I like the idea of maybe some like hand or fingerprints as well. I think that looks pretty natural. I kind of like that. Maybe let's try a couple other um, hand or fingerprints and, and see um, what that ends up looking like. Let's drop 
this one and it's got a lot of fingerprints um yeah it's it's a bit it's a bit much i like something where they're kind of covered up a little bit more let's see here uh, let's try this set of hand and fingerprint smudges that one's not that bad you know that one's really not that bad so yeah dial this in this is really where we can have lots of fun with the material creation uh, but let's now see what just some basic lighting can do for us in here um, let's go into some of our hdris let's open this up and let's try some pro studios let's just click around here um, now some of these might be too blown out uh, we can always adjust any of this you know we can get different kind of color patterns and spectrums in here i mean this is this is getting pretty nice as well but all of this all these different lighting setups are going to drastically change the way your materials look and so that's why anytime you're creating materials you know you want to be doing lighting at the same time you want to figure out what you want the mood of this piece to be because as you can see it is very very different depending on what hdri i'm using i wonder if some like more location-based stuff will look will look better you know maybe something that feels more like an interior room rather than kind of like a studio lit um kind of kind of situation so let's do that let's see um yeah i mean that looks cool you know inside this living room fun room right just like go around like even this like you see how we're getting this kind of nice little highlight off to the side we're losing a lot of the surface texture of like the table which i can get back from this this is kind of looking pretty cool let's let's kind of move forward with this one right here i think the surface of the table is a bit too extreme in that roughness so maybe we're going to bring this down the overall intensity of it something like that's pretty cool and you know, you can give this more personality than just an HDRI. We could always come in here and create, you know, add a little area light or something like that. Maybe we rotate this area light and bring it over here and move it off to the side. I'll move its position back a little bit more here in a moment. And maybe something has got... A little bit more of an angle would be better. Move it up and over. And let's dial back the overall intensity. Right now we're getting more of, uh, of this like little highlight here off to the side edge as well. Uh, maybe we add, you know, maybe there's some warmth coming in. Maybe there's coolness. Maybe it's more from like a kind of a, an office space or something like that. That's, you know, that's going to be really a cool way of getting a lot more control too. Let's bring this down to like 12. Um, I can copy this light and I can call this light warm. I can copy it and paste it and bring this light now over here off to the opposite side. And I might want to get a little bit of a top angle on this. Move it up and over and then maybe on this light i bring this light into kind of more of this cool spectrum maybe drop down the overall intensity again so let's see with that on and off yeah it just adds a little bit extra to this as well i'm, I'm really liking this overall might even dial this back down to maybe something like an eight uh, but just like that, um, now we can go into our camera imager. And again, this is like all the, the fun aspect. Uh, maybe I increase the overall exposure. It's getting a little blown out in a couple areas. Um, let's enable some post-processing, add a little bloom in for some kind of like a little bit of haze in here. Um, I like getting my gamma brought down just a touch as well bring out a little bit more contrast but you know something like this is really kind of feeling nice you know if i wanted to come in here and mess around uh, with how intense maybe this bump map is you know maybe 0.2 maybe it's just like a little bit less you know this is really something you can play with you can even begin to kind of mess with the gamma overall because that's going to have a big impact on the look, right? You can see this has got a lot more contrast in it now, where if I bring this gamma down, it's got less contrast, but we're seeing more overall kind of like 
grub, gr griminess, grubbiness um, onto like the surface there. And that's it. Obviously, we can just keep tweaking this um, over and over again. Uh, we can even bring up our HDRI intensity a little bit, bring some of that light in. Uh, but that's it. That's from beginning to end, you know, modeling something, learning some more hard surface modeling techniques and kind of like making this our own, right? But, you know, from just an image reference model, um, you know, I would look at this and be like, yeah, I probably want to bring the overall height down. It's probably not that tall. Uh, but this is really, really kind of getting close to where we want to go. All right, that's it, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned. I'm going to have a lot more of these types of tutorials coming out soon.